In this video, we're going to be building and adding the module that Inductive Automation has on their GitHub website. Um, so how this all started. Uh, I was wondering how you would build your own custom modules or to add your own components to the perspective module. Uh, so I found a post on the forum from last year, September of last year, where other people are wondering the same thing. <clears throat> And uh, here I found this link here to the GitHub, Inductive Automations GitHub. And there's examples, and it's actually quite current as well. So two days ago, there's examples how to build um, a module and then how to add it to your gateway so that you can um, create your own custom modules. So. Perspective is a module, but you can also modify the perspective component and and add components, for example. So we'll see we'll see that in action by the end of this video. So we're not going to be customizing anything yet because I fully under I don't fully understand um, all the components here. It is a little complicated. So this perspective component is the one that we will end up building using Gradle. Uh, there are quite a bit of moving parts. So there's Gradle and Yarn. I've used I've used TypeScript, a little bit of Webpack, um, but it will require reading through. So we're not going to customize anything in this directory. We're just going to clone it uh, onto our local machine and then install the necessary tools, build uh, the MODL file, and then add it to our gateway and create a simple project and add the custom components that it adds into the project. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, we're going to need to install Git, so that way we can clone this directory. We don't actually need to install Git, but it will be useful uh, in the future. We'll be using Git. You can just download as a zip file here, this entire directory, but I uninstalled Git a few minutes ago, so I can show you for the purposes of this video so I'm going to reinstall it. Um, it should be a simple Google search, download Git. Uh, this I'm on a Windows machine, Windows 10, a 64-bit machine, obviously. So it downloads your installer for you. Um, when it does, just click on it, same as any other uh, installer. So when the screen went black just now, that was the UAC user access control just asking me whether I want to allow the installation of this program. I'll click next. Yes. Uh, so you want to make sure and click these few settings here. Windows Explorer X integration here. It just means when you right click inside, a, inside of a directory, you'll get these two options here. Uh, Git bash here is very useful. I don't really use Git GUI, so I'll unselect that, but you do want to select Git bash here and I'll show you why. Click next, um, next. So instead of using Vim, I do have Visual Studio Code installed. So you can use any other text editor, um, but I do have Visual Studio Code and that's what I use. So I'll select that. There's also Notepad++ here. So it's just a preference here. These settings I leave as is. Um, okay. And then go through with the installation. So this might take, this shouldn't take too long. I don't remember it ever taking super long. Okay, let's go ahead and finish with this installer here. Also, obviously, if you have it installed already, you don't need to go through that process. Let me open my file explorer, go to documents. Let me create a new folder called Ignition Modules or something like that. 
And then here's the option that I was talking about. So when you right click here, you can see this option, get bash here. Also open with code. When you install VS code, that's also an option and it's very useful. So let's hit get bash here. And then, so there, if you don't know what Git is, it's a version control system. It's pretty intimidating to learn. At least it was for me. I never fully understood it, but it, it, it operates on a pretty simple concept. So instead of having versions, say in the old school developer world, you would have folders like version one, version one, final, or version one, final, final. You know, when you put, uh, when you create new versions of, a, of an application or a program, but Git lets you keep track of all the changes. So uh, there's a website, GitHub, um, it's related to Git, the tool, and on GitHub, you can push your changes up to GitHub, and then it'll keep track of all the changes. So as you're developing, say, a web application, you can see every time you commit and you push to GitHub, you can go back and check what changes were made. So if something breaks, you can easily revert back. So it's a very nice system. Um, there are a few commands that I use. I've used it pretty extensively over the past year, and I usually only use four different commands, git clone, git add, git commit, and git push. But in this instance, we only need one command. So if we go back to the GitHub repository here, let's copy, instead of the GitHub CLI, make sure HTTPS here is checked and uh, copy this here, this URL, and then go back into our bash and just type in the words git clone. Uh, if you do control V, nothing will happen. You have to right click here and select paste. You can change, oops, paste. Let's see what happened there. Oh, let me go back and make sure this is actually copied. Copy. Maybe I'll use, oh, shouldn't be this hard. There we go, copy. And then let's go back to our bash and paste our link. So it's pretty much a, a URL that matches this URL, but it just adds this ignition dash SDK dash examples get repository. So if you click enter, I'm not sure if it will remember my credentials or if they're even needed, but it looks like that went through. If it doesn't work for you, you might need to create a Git GitHub account and then add your credentials um, into to use your GitHub account and so that you can clone. I'm not sure if it if you need credentials to clone, but you do need credentials obviously to push to your GitHub account. So what that did for us is if we open our file explorer again, you can see I should have had it open. So let me just delete this actually. Let me delete that and then rerun this command. Um, and you'll see that this repository will pop up in my local system here. Okay, and this repository here will mirror, so if you look here, expression function, vision component, all of these components are here. Okay, so now that we have the Git repository on our local machine, um, we need to install one more component that will actually do the building for us. Um, so if you go to the documentation, actually, uh, it says using your IDE of choice. So when I was going through these steps on my own, I installed NetBeans because I remember using it to develop Java applications maybe five years ago, but it didn't seem like the best IDE. So I uninstalled it and instead installed IntelliJ. So that's what we're going to do at this time. IntelliJ IDE. Um, download. So there's a community version that is free and that will do the work that will basically build the module for us. So go ahead and click download here. I already have the installer downloaded, but I'll download anyway. Uh, this will take 50 seconds, it says, 
So I will speed this up and resume the video when it's done. Okay, the installer is downloaded. Let's go ahead and click on it. Okay, once again, the UAC, the screen probably blanked and I clicked allow, obviously. Let's go ahead and click next. This should be a standard installation. Next, um, I want to add I don't remember what exactly. I want to add a desktop shortcut for the 64-bit launcher. Okay, next, install. Okay, and then this will go through the installation process. Uh, if I remember correctly, I haven't, you know, I installed this about five days ago. It's a Saturday and I did it on a Monday. Um, but this part didn't take as long as the next part. So when you actually open IntelliJ, there is a process where I'm not sure exactly what it's doing. Again, I don't fully understand um, Inductive's process and I don't fully understand all the tools they use. I'm just following their documentation right now. But there's, I think what it's doing, what takes so long is it's downloading all of the packages that are needed to build the actual module. So I remember this, the installation was pretty fast. Um, as you see here, it's done about a minute later, but there is a longer process as you'll see. Let's launch this IntelliJ. Uh, I don't want to import settings. Okay, and so I believe once we're at this point, We want to import this project into our IDE. So let's go back to IntelliJ and so there's a way to do this. I forgot how, how I did it. Um, so maybe new project. No, maybe open. Okay. Will be under documents, probably documents, ignition modules, and then you want to open the perspective component here. This scope, so not your top level ignition SDK examples, but your perspective dash component folder. We want to trust the project. I'm pretty sure this is how I did it. And so this process here is what took a long time. Um, I think what it's doing here is, well, I guess it says it's building the module, so, or model. I guess that didn't take as long as I thought it would. Okay, once we're at this point here, we can see, let's just look at our IDE here. It is. A pretty standard IDE if you've used Android Studio this is it looks very similar and I believe it's based on the same IDE I believe it's based on IntelliJ on your left hand side here you have your directory so it matches this directory here so perspective component you'll have your dot gradle dot idea and then your other directories and then some files here so these so like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't fully understand all of these files and what their function functions are at this point. I just wanted to build um, from their example here, following their getting started, uh, I wanted to build the first, the these few examples and see how, how it ends up being in the designer, how to add them. Um, okay, so in the getting started section, uh, I remember it taking a lot longer, so this might not work, but let's go ahead and open a terminal. Uh, your bottom left corner, there's a terminal button here. And so we are in our direct, 
the correct directory. Let's go ahead and run this command here. So Gradle W, which I assume means Gradle wrapper dot bat batch file. Uh, if you are on Linux or Mac OS, you'll run a pretty similar example, pretty similar uh, command here. So let's go ahead and run Gradle W dot bat build module. Okay, and it's going to, there's a status symbol here, and it's going to, I don't know exactly what it does to be completely honest. I don't understand this process completely, but it's going to do something. It's going to download packages, maybe dependencies, and um, it's going to do something. Obviously, it's not very descriptive. Uh, but I will speed this part up as well. Okay, so we can see that the build was successful in, it took one minute and 37 seconds on my machine. It will be different for you most likely. Okay, so at, you can see that in your project browser here on the left, there is a new directory called build that also exists. Mm -hmm. So let me pull this up here in my file explorer. So you go to perspective component, there is a build folder here. And then inside you can find this unsigned dot MODL. When I saw this extension or this file with this extension, I was excited because um, this is the extension that ignition modules usually have. Okay, so now we're going to add this MODL file to our gateway so that we can actually use this module and see what it does and see how to interact with it in the designer. Uh, so I forgot to, when I did this the first time, I, for, I went back and uninstalled everything to start from scratch because that's the most useful. But what I did forget to do was um, remove a line you have to add to the ignition conf to add, to be basically in developer mode, to add unsigned modules. But we'll do that. So let's add this MODL, this module file to our gateway. So I'm going to open my gateway. So go to local host. Let me log in here. Uh, let me actually restart my restart my gateway. Uh, I don't remember how to do that. From here, I usually use the command. So we're going to be here in this modules section. I actually need to uninstall this module so that I can show you how I did it. Uh, but let me go ahead and re reboot my gateway. So I'm, I'm doing the inductive university courses. By the way, just a side note, um, inductive automation, the way their documentation is set up is so impressive. I'm constantly amazed at the level of documentation, both video documentation and uh, the forums and also their documentation site. It's very thorough. You can pretty much find anything you're looking for. So props to them for documenting everything very well. So let's go, I'm going to, I've, I learned this this week uh, that you can restart the gateway using the command line tool. So it's gonna be good practice for me. So let me open a command line, a command prompt in administrator mode, this is important. This, it won't work if you do it otherwise. So CMD and then run as administrator, UAC pops up. I wanna click yes. And then I, let me change directory to my, uh, to my installation location. So it's usually program files for a 64 bit installation, inductive automation, ignition. If we look inside this directory, we see our GWCMD. 
So let's go ahead and run this GWCMD. If you add the dash H flag, you get to see all the different commands and what they do. So we, what we want to do is uh, do this dash R or dash dash restart. So CMD dash R, it's going to restart my gateway. The only reason I'm doing this is because I commented out um, the line that allows me to add unsigned modules from my ignition.com file, which we will add and then we'll restart the gateway again. But I just wanted to, to show what it would look like for a first time install. Okay, gateway is now running. So if you don't add that line that I've been talking about to your ignition.com file, this is what you'll get. So our, ignore this here. Um, we're gonna have to log in again. So if you go to modules and install or upgrade a module, um, and then I'm going to browse to my file and it's a weird location. Okay, I'm going to go to my documents, ignition modules, ignition SDK, perspective component. I'm looking for this build folder here because it contains my my MODL file, which is the, the file extension you want for a, an ignition module. So let me go ahead and select that and click open, install, and then you're going to get this error message here. So I Googled around and found on the forum, the reason why you get this is because, uh, well, it's not signed by any certificate or authority. And uh, basically ignition is, inductive automation is warning you that this may not be safe. Uh, a module may have access to the underlying um, to your underlying system, and it could make changes that you don't foresee or you don't you don't want. So this is a safety feature, but the way to go around it is to modify your ignition.com file. I really am forgetting how to speak English today. So let's go. <clears throat> to C, program files are basically the location of our ignition installation. Go to the data directory and in here um, is our ignition.conf file. Let me edit this with notepad++. And then, so you can see that it opened up at the location that, where I commented this out. So inside your Conf file. If you go to the wrapper Java properties, this is a maker installation, but the full ignition installation should be similar. And then under Java additional parameters here, you add this line here, wrapper dot Java dot additional, and then any number here. I'm not sure what these numbers mean, to be completely honest, or if they even matter or affect anything these numbers here. So you just add the next one. For example, if if your Java additional dot six was the last one, you just want to add it as dot seven. But in my case, I have dot one, two, three, four. So I just added it as dot five. And then you want this command. I'll leave this command here um, on our discord and also in the description of this video. That way, or you can also type it out. I found this on the forum, by the way, just for proper attribution. So after you add this line here, exactly as you see it here, you want to go ahead and save this file. Um, the save failed, so, but I can launch Notepad++ in administrator mode. That's why I'm using it here. And then, so it kind of, it opens in administrator mode at the same place you're at and I just want to hit save here but of course if we go back here and restart the process nothing will happen because we need to reboot our gateway which is what we will do here so let me go let me restart this process so you want to open a command prompt as administrator and then change directory is what CD means we want to uh, browse to our install location so program files inductive autom automation uh, ignition and then here 
So you can always see, okay, G, W, C, M, D. We want to do dash R to restart the ignition gateway. We can also go into our Windows services and restart it that way. I just want to practice this way because not only is can you restart it, but you can do a lot of other tasks, which you can see if you use the dash H flag or the help flag. So let's wait for the gateway to restart. This should take, um, so there you go, 25 seconds maybe. Okay, let's refresh here and our gateway is back up and running. Let's log in. Okay, so we're back. We're in the config section uh, under system modules and let's install or upgrade a module. So now if we browse, select the same module, install, uh, it gives us this warning um, and it tells you you're running in developer mode. So what we were doing, adding that line into our ignition.com file was basically putting our ignition gateway into developer mode is how I understand it. So let's click, we understand the risks. I, If you're developing modules, as we will be in the future, I wouldn't do this on a production system. Maybe have a test computer that you're using it on. That way you don't screw anything up, which is what this error message is kind of telling you. So we want to install the module though. And then you can see it under this unsigned section because we didn't sign it. There is no certificate assigned or associated with this rad components. Also this rad components name, uh, this is what was added by inductive automation. Their developers, I didn't change any of it. I, I just cloned it. Basically what we did in this video is, so everything you see here is uh, what inductive automation already did. So let, now that we have it in our gateway, uh, let's open a designer. So let me minimize these, open my designer. go to testing to my testing project okay let me create a view just for the purposes of this video so let's call it rad module or something I don't really know and then call it rad view choose the most, the bestest root container type, select container, let's add a page URL, rad view, and create this view here. And then you can see, so you may be wondering, now that we added that module, how do we actually access it in our designer? And if you go to perspective components, if you don't see this window here, what you could do is go to view reset panels, maybe not, okay, you should be able to snap in, there we go, so there's your perspective components, and then if you scroll to, scroll down, my video camera died because it has a 30 minute recording limit, so let me go back, um, I don't know when it died. It was sometime during when I opened my designer. So we want to open the designer once again, uh, create a new view. I put it inside this folder called rad module, and then I created a view called rad view. You want to set it to flex container type. And then I gave it a path called rad view. That way we can see it in a session. And then if you go to your perspective module pane here and scroll almost to the bottom, you'll see that there's a new section called rad things. This rad things is, is our custom, our, our, our addition to the perspective module. So if you go back to the documentation uh, and then go to perspective component, it says here, summary of components. So this is what we're actually adding. We're adding a image component a tag counter and a messenger component. So after we built uh, our, after we ran that Gradle command and built, built our module and added it into our ignition gateway, we can see them pop up here as rad things. So there's our image, our tag counter and our messenger. 
let's just go ahead and drag these on. Woohoo! Rad image, there's tag counter, and there's a gateway messenger. We see that they're completely new perspective components. So this is the direction. Um, I'm interested in learning how to build these components, how to, how to customize them, how to add them so that they pop up here. So this is kind of uh, the first step towards, towards that goal. So I wanted just to see how they would interact with the designer. But there is, of course, a lot of background knowledge that the inductive automation guys have that I don't have. How they registered it so that it pops up here, how they built it using TypeScript, all of those things. But you can interact with these components here. You can see that there's a URL that controls that controls that there's a color, a bunch of different properties. And then they also have your position and custom and made meta sections here as well. And then you can see that they're, they react exactly as other perspective components do. You can see that this color here is flashing. Okay, so that is pretty much all I had to show. Um, I do want to create more videos in this direct, kind of moving in the same direction, how to add your own perspective components here because while these components do do a lot of things that we like, especially some of the newer components like a power chart, um, there are uh, some of the components do lack some of the features you may want to see and you just may want to add your own components. So we're slowly gonna move in that direction. Anyway, that is all I have today. I did not expect this video to be this long. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comments or in the Discord. We have several people in the Discord now. Thank you to whoever joined. Um, anyway, I hope that was helpful. And we are one step closer to world domination. I will see you in the next video.